Hello everyone and welcome back to my efficient design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, the first order of business is to bring Jeb Kerman back over to Kerbin. So without further ado, I want to try and do a few things in this episode, but we don't have much science right now, so we need to bring back the science that he has accumulated by doing a surface sample and EV report on the surface of Ike. And so yeah. Let us do such things. Uh, and I think uh, Jeb is ready to go. I'll bring up the... No, not that stuff. This stuff. And... Okay. Okay, gear up. And our little lander is underway. It's too bad we didn't uh, pack more scientific instruments on this, but we'll do a separate science mission. I've already created uh, the science probe version of this with uh, Science Junior up here and the goo containers. It's a minor adaptation, obviously. The mass of the Science Junior and goo containers combined is uh, 0.5 tons, so it's not too far off from the pod, and uh, when you add uh, when you add the control unit, then it's pretty much what the pod is at. Okay, so now the trick is I'm going to need to time warp in this area. Well, actually, I could just uh, head to... Yeah, I don't have to uh, go too far out. I could just head to the tracking station to time warp so that he's in the right position. So I'm not going to overdo things here. Alright, Jeb looks good. Ike looks lumpy, but our our uh, our landing site was uh, decently flat. Don't worry about our fuel. We still have to transfer stuff from these tanks, which are not being read over here. So it's not as dire as it looks. That reminds me, in the next version of this design, I'm going to need to add some uh, fuel lines, finally. If I have them, I think I have them now. Okay, that's orbit. That should be good enough for a safe, safe orbit. Yeah, that's uh, plenty high enough. Okay, just a little bit left in here. And... Yeah, I, I think we can transfer now. Okay, that's looking a lot better. And now I'm going to uh, slip on out to the tracking station so that we can time warp so that uh, Duna will be in the right position for transfer back to Kerbin. Okay, uh, Kerbin had to make practically an entire orbit, or it looked like it anyway, so... But now we've got it uh, right, I think. 75 degrees, Kerbin has to be behind Duna for the transfer back. And my protractor says this is right, so we'll go with that. So, uh, back to the mission. Now, let's attempt to plot our most efficient way to go. First, uh, back out to Duna. Okay, I think I've got something that's good enough. Uh, we've got a maneuver away from Ike going 117.5 and then another one uh, to depart Duna with uh, 542 meters per second and those combined get us to 5,000 kilometers and that's a proper home and transfer so yep I think we'll go with that so this is our sequence of burns should not be a problem for Jeb Okay, I believe that will do it. Keeping the same maneuver, let's see if that changed how we reach. Yeah, it uh, put us further away from Earth. Maybe we can fix that a little bit. Uh, within 6,000 kilometers, that's close enough to what we had. Okay, so now the burn around Duna. 
to do that part of the thing. Okay, here we go. Heading back home. Okay, looks like we're flying straight in. It's uh, 23 kilometers. We've got it. We can aero brake and aero capture at uh, at Kerbin. So no need for a mid-course plane change here. Let's just uh, proceed into interplanetary space and then continue. Jeb still staring at Duna. Up, oh, he's back to business now. You know, Jeb wanted to land on Duna instead of Ike, of course. Okay, here we go, around the system. And uh, on exiting Duna space, uh, we ended up with a periapsis of 168. Uh, not a big problem, and uh, frankly, considering how tight that is from this far out, I would have been surprised if we didn't have some sort of little error there. Okay, so welcome to Kerbin Space, and our first goal will be to get into a safe orbit actually, not, uh, not all the way down. So we need to... 32 should do it. Might be too much in fact, but uh, let's, let's go for 32. If it brings us down, it brings us down. We, we've come home from Ike, after all. But, if we can get into orbit, then there's a possibility that... Okay, we'll go for, with 33. If we get into orbit, then there's a possibility that we can uh, try to aim for the KSC, though we also have to be concerned about our inclination. Let's see if we can correct some of that here. Uh, there we go. Ah, we need to be brought in a little bit closer now. Oh heck, let me uh, go check aero braking calculator to see how how high I should be. Okay, so I wasn't too far off. Uh, it says, uh, depending on what apoapsis I want, uh, roughly between 33,200 and 33,700. So, yeah, I was in the, in the right ballpark, though not quite so exact. Ah, too much. Mmm, okay. I'll go with that for now. High variation depending on how I turn, so... Yeah, we'll... We'll sell for that. And, uh... Well, here we go, approaching Kerbin. Where are you, Kerbin? Can I use... There it is. Very good. All right. Let's see now. Well, that's within the range, so I'll just keep it. Pretty much dead on on the inclination, so that's nice. Where is the KSC? Over here. Ah, that's interesting. 
Okay. Okay, here we go. Targeting something between 200 and 500 kilometers apoapsis. Though, if it would like to uh, give us an orbit that will land us right at the KSC, I won't argue. We probably don't have to go around again. I think we can uh, try to aim for it now. I think I'll go with this. Yeah, let's let's try that out for size. Oh, we definitely have plenty enough fuel for this sort of thing. We're uh, coming a little bit higher than we normally do on these approaches. Uh, of course, with uh, launchers, which is the first thing I usually bring down. Uh, we keep it well under the altitudes that we're working with here. Or at least we're supposed to keep them well under. But, uh, yeah, so... It's a totally different calculation on the re-entry here. We are perhaps coming in a bit too high. I would like to at least hit this continent. Uh, looks like I should just uh, spend all of it. Okay, well that's all of our fuel. There's still some debris there from the launcher, I guess. We didn't quite manage to recover that. We gotta hit land or water? Might be water. We could preemptively deploy parachute. And take off SAS at the same time. Try and hit land. Landing gear down. Doing stuff like that past the speed of sound is a little bit dodgy, but... Uh, borderline. Should get a good grade for it, but I don't think this is what we were aiming for. Okay, uh, parachute fully deployed, safe velocities, at least for this lander, though I think the launch vehicle this would be too much for given the way it got wrecked, but anyway this should be fine. Oop, and there we go. Let's recover Jeb and see what we've got. Okay, and here we are. 494 science, crew report from the surface, surface sample, EV report, and recovery of a vessel from the surface of ICA brought a, a very nice 75 science, more than the EVA report in fact. Uh, parts, uh, well, uh, we landed uh, only 15 kilometers away, got uh, A to an A+, plus, depending how you look at it. I, I think we'll reserve the A+, plus for actually landing on the grounds of the KSC. So we'll call it an A. And uh, we got plenty of funds back for that. Of course, we got the contract amounts for the Ike contracts. Yeah, these. So, uh, especially a transmitter recover scientific data from the surface of Ike. Got that. And a uh, formal reputation for bringing back Jeb. Uh, we had lost some reputation because we didn't do some of the contracts that we had signed up for, the part contracts. Uh, but uh, So we're still gaining some of that back. All right, so uh, well, let's take a quick look at the tech tree. This is our situation, and 
we we could use some docking ports. I think that's a very important thing for the next phase in our reusability because uh, a space station of some kind uh, could be very helpful for our future here. So uh, that's a big thing. Uh, the actuators they classify it under the advanced docking uh, advanced grabbing unit uh, is not quite necessary just yet. Plane parts. Well, I wanted to uh, mess around with some planes this time, so I'm going to. But I'm gonna forego the delta wing because that's just too obvious. Uh, we'll wait for that. Uh, the the Kerbals seem to be able to hop around just fine, though maybe we need some mobility. We'll see. Actually, you know what? Okay, yeah, let's research that. The big landing struts. We we've got a cute little lander. And I don't see why we would need that if we if we were just going to be efficient about things. So I'm gonna say uh, we need specialized construction for for interesting things. Let's uh, research that. Okay, uh, we'll reserve the 210 for if I suddenly figure out that I need something, I will have that available. But uh, we've only got these three technologies that we can afford with that, otherwise these cost more. Alright, uh, so let's take a look at the SPH and see what I can come up with, come up with as far as uh, airplanes are concerned. Okay, so this is my first, uh, first foray into making a plane in stock in maybe a year, uh, close to a year maybe. Um, I'm a bit nervous about it because I don't have FAR. I'm not doing all the normal analysis I would do with a plane. Uh, I'm vaguely aware that all of the things that I normally do uh, to get a plane working properly in, uh, for instance, the EDB aerospace series are completely irrelevant here. Um, <laughs> Uh, there are certain basic things like making sure the landing gear is in the right place and your center lift and center of mass are properly configured, but other than that, uh, I have very little hope. Uh, of, uh, uh, so I, I tried to make it conservative and I'm not doing intake spam too much, I've just got two per engine. Uh, we don't have the regular intakes uh, that I would have put on the front here, we just have the nose cone, that's all I've got to shove on there. So. That's why I went with. I haven't emptied the. Obviously, there's too much liquid fuel, but I haven't emptied it. We'll just go with it. Uh, we do have some science to uh, bring back, maybe. So uh, we just unlocked the barometer, so we can try that out. Um, and uh, we've got the rocket just in case we want to do barometer in a high atmosphere, and for some reason the jets can't get us there. And of course, it'll give me a better sense of stock aerodynamics after not having dealt with it in a very long time. Uh, it might even have changed over time, I don't know. So, uh, so yeah, let's hope that this works out. Uh, who shall we crew? Um, courage, no stupidity, lots of courage, lots of stupidity. Desric. Desric flies again, yes, okay. Uh, so, alright, I don't know. I think it X1, like that. Uh, I have action group the jets so I can turn them off uh, so that maybe we can do something. Let's see. I don't know. Uh, this is weird for me. Let's find out how this works. So yeah, if it wasn't obvious, uh, this is these are the only wing parts we have. We don't have the wing connector or the or the delta wing yet. So it's not like I had a lot of choice. We could uh, do uh, sort of layer these wings. Um, there's a few possibilities, but for larger aircraft. We're going to need those delta wings and wing connectors, otherwise it's not going to look right. And, you know, I, I do demand that things look right. So, uh, throttle is up, SAS is on, Desric is a go. Yes? Ah, I don't even have the raster prop monitor stuff. Okay. Um, Alright, let's, uh, let's light this turkey. Probably should take the outside view just to make sure I don't scrape the tail. Let's try this. Let's see. Okay. Up, we're up. Gear up.
I should have actually grouped the experiments and I could probably fly from here. Okay, very nice. Don't have to worry about aerodynamic failures. Okay, let's uh, let's go back to 90. Well, uh, maybe we could do a traffic pattern sort of thing. Let's turn to 180. Don't have much of an altimeter around here. Just that. Uh, okay. Anyway, we'll turn to 180. Then we'll see uh, what kind of up angle we can get. Angle of attack. Okay. A bit tough. Okay, our speed seems to be decreasing. Nope, it's increasing. Okay, so we can increase angle. Pretty good. Intake air is diminishing. Okay, we really can't see anything out the window, in window now, so uh, we'll go back out here. Let's uh, log pressure data. Okay, we'll keep that data. Bring it back. I don't know if we've done temperature here. I assume so. No? Okay. Uh, was this uh, biome dependent? No, it isn't. Okay, so, but the temperature is. So we could uh, get temperature data from other places. could fly around like that. Okay, and in the comments, don't tell me to do intake spam. I'll I'll put as many intakes that I think are are uh, reasonably decent looking, but uh, if it gets a little bit too out of hand, I'm I'm not gonna go there. I have my design limits. Okay, uh, let's actually turn to uh, 270 now. Wow, this thing doesn't handle very well at altitude. Uh, okay, it's getting a little bit nose heavy. Right. Okay. That should help, but I don't feel it. Come on, you. This is right at the center of mass, I'm surprised. Okay, I think uh, we need to head back to base with this Desric. This is not working out very well. Let's light that engine again. Got to try and balance this out using the fuel from the rocket. There's a long duration on the LV-909, of course. I could have put a more powerful rocket, but I deliberately wanted the duration rather than the speed because I wasn't bringing this to orbit just yet. Let us do try to aim for the high atmosphere, though. So we'll get that barometer reading. Uh, we 
are not doing so well here. <sighs> Kerbal Aerodynamics is... Uh, I'm gonna have to do more Kerbal Aerodynamics exploration before I can uh, look competent at uh, this stuff again. Because this is very different from what I'm used to now. Gotta try one more time for the high altitude barometer reading. Let me just check that we've done a thermometer around here. No, we haven't. Okay, keep the data. So we might get all our science done anyway. Okay, let's level out here. I'm trying to gain some speed. Make sure that our intakes get the air that they need. I forget what qualifies for high atmosphere, but I hesitate to do the barometer reading until we w reach our apex since uh, sometimes the barometers bug out and don't let me record the data if they've failed once before. Okay, I'm gonna turn those off. I'm gonna lose speed, but uh, we'll still gain altitude. Yes, I know this is a bit of a fiasco, this is, but this is my first try building a plane in KSP stock in like an incredible amount of time. Okay, well, let's log pressure data. Okay, upper atmosphere. Excellent. Well, uh, in terms of science, that's all the science that I was planning to get out of this. So, mission successful on that. Uh, no, that, that's gonna cause a uh, flame out. Okay, now we've got it. Let's reserve some of that uh, rocket fuel for just in case we need it. Wow. So let's head south. Well, let's not go too far now. Okay, our debris seems to have uh, produced a little marker that we can use. Now, uh, somebody mentioned that I should plant a flag at the KSC in order to make sure that I know where I am, and that's a good idea uh, in terms of trying to hit the KSC more precisely in the future. That will definitely be an important thing. But I haven't done, done that yet. I, I will, but I'll have to remember to do that soon. Okay. Another interesting thing about uh, designing aircraft is that if you do show the first time you're flying it, which I am doing here, um, you don't really know the stall speeds and the landing speeds for the aircraft makes it a lot harder to uh, fly them than say in the flight sim where I know the exact uh, performance data for all of the aircraft involved so that's uh, that's an added challenge when it comes to designing your own I wonder if they put this peak here just as a as a reference point for turning towards the KSC would be a good idea
So yeah, here we go. Let's turn. What's the IVA view like? Uh, no, can't see land very well at this, and we're pretty much level, so I would like to... Uh, yeah. The eye point is just a little bit low for me. Oops. I think I've got the runway in sight now. I suppose it's not horrible. Just trying to assess whether I could possibly make a landing like this, but uh, if there's any doubt in my mind, I'm not going to risk a Kerbal on it. Maybe on an unmanned mission I would, but... Oh, speaking of which, uh, is there a possibility of a crew report here? Yeah, okay. Keep that. Haven't really done much of the around Kerbin stuff. We just jumped right into doing uh, planetary stuff pretty quickly. And that was by design. Now we have a lot of this stuff to do. And we can use planes for them. Okay, we are too high. Again, not sure of my stall speed and all that, and we're coming in pretty high. Let me try and get down here. Okay. That's a bad angle. Up, oh, up, oh, no, 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 come on. Down. Down! Damn it, this thing does not want to go down. Oh boy, I'm running out of runway. Okay, uh, break, 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 break. Okay, well, uh, Desric managed to uh, complete his mission, did all the sciences, and we get to recover this craft. Not bad for our first uh, aircraft uh, foray in a long time. 31.5 science earned. Uh, we recovered all of it, 100% of the value of the aircraft. Uh, not really. Uh, we, we did spend some of the fuel, so that's not... I mean, okay, whatever. Uh, we got uh, 1.2 points for the return of Desric, so another boost to our reputation. And with that, uh, I think I'll uh, call it an episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, combo episode, bringing Jeb back home from Ike and our first plane test in a long time in stock KSP. And uh, if you did enjoy this video, please do press like. And if you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.